Hey guys, um, it's going to be the raw deal here today. So it's a good message, but it may not be a warm, fuzzy feeling message, but it's not intended to be. Our houses have been polluted and diluted. Our altars have been polluted. Church is overrated, guys. It's the altar of us is what I'm talking about. And don't do the pendulum the other way and say I'm saying not to assemble yourselves. That's not what I'm saying. Just hear me out. This message came came 2019 and had a boss at a church we worked at. And man, I was kind of aggravated because it was like, because because I know where some of it was coming from, but it wasn't the right spirit. But it turned God turned it around into a good message. And they had us doing this, but it was for showmanship and to please man at first. But the message that God gave me out of it, he took that, that thing that was aggravating me because it was a little bit of a pinprick, which was came out of Second Chronicles 29. Read all of it, guys. The Lord showed Hezekiah there was sin. It's like he showed David there was sin in the camp. We've got to get rid of this election infection, the coronavirus lies. Guys, I'm not saying the disease isn't real saying all the lies, but it's time that God wants us to clean up our altar. And back to what I was saying about church has been overrated. I was a kid. I'm going to get into this message deep, but you just got to hear this piece of it so you don't take it wrong. Did a lot of camping on the Mississippi River and I was built, built a lot of fires. All, sometimes all day long, you'd just be getting wood and gathering. And fire would look great and Go to bed at 12 or whatever, 1, 11, whatever time. Wake up the next morning, the fire was out. Maybe a few little embers, nothing real serious. What I'm saying, guys, is if we're, if our altars are polluted, our homes are polluted, our lives are polluted, we've laid an altar of success. We've got altars that are just, we've got stuff clouding this. And we're not in tune with what the Spirit's saying. When we gather together in a church, it's for a 45 minute, couple hour, three hour, whatever. It's for just a show. Tell God we showed up. We want to be that city that's set upon a hill. We better be fired up, guys, on fire with the Holy Ghost, full of His Word, full of truth, full of listening and prayer and seeking His face, full of God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. No more games, guys. That's what I'm saying. Then when we assemble ourselves, it's not a fire, it's a forest fire. We are that city that's set upon a hill. You wonder why this coronavirus, I put this message out, nobody wanted to hear it. One virus took out the church. We thought we were this great big powerhouse. It's because our houses are polluted. Mine too, guys. I'm not. This is not a message of, hey, you need to clean up, and I don't. I hate those messages. God hates those messages. It's for all of us, guys. The Bible is the Bible. God is God. Jesus is Jesus. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost. We all need to take heed to what the Spirit's saying to the church. This is not Monopoly. I don't get to pass go and collect 200 bucks and tell you guys how to live and I don't want, and I don't live it like that. That's part of the part of the issue of the pollution. The church has been polluted. The government's been polluted. We've been lied to. It's a lot more than the fraud, guys. It's a lie, but it's the sin that's behind it. It's the evilness that's behind it. Evil and corrupt. Because it's the lust of the flesh. It's all about the money, honestly, guys. The abortion industry is murder just to make money. Murder just to kill people. It is. 
and it's it all now it's you know man i could go on and on about this stuff guys and but all it's gonna do is be more pollution and the lord's you know now it's you know if you're over 75 your life doesn't really matter i mean all kinds of crazy stuff you know taking fathers and mothers out of the congress and just man it's your stupidity guys this is getting clouded with just junk pollution that's why i turned off cnn and all the media two years ago because i was like man i'm not paying 150 bucks for 800 channels and i don't even watch them maybe i'll watch the discovery channel a little bit the history channel i like that just because of old world war ii stuff for some reason that just but i caught myself you know oh i'm a big boy and i can you know discern and i'd watch cnn and try to pull out the good stuff out of the bad man no i'm not just picking on cnn a, a lot of them, most of them it's just trash guys we've been polluting our mind with the garbage and we need to fill it with the word of god and prayer and dedication and read that message and weep hezekiah went into the went into the temple and cleaned and purged it we need to clean and purge our own temples our own houses our own lives that's what he wants we're the church guys you're the church it's not the building it's not where you go it's not your pastor man guys there's so much twisted stuff about a year ago maybe two i was in prayer and i was like man god what do i do with all this i was kind of a little overwhelmed feeling and just seemed like there was too much going on and you know some of it was prayer some of it was complaining too to god but long story but anyhow the lord spoke to me he said just be I'm like well that sounds good just be the scriptures were already there and i'd already heard them and it just kind of started coming into place this last few days. He said, just be holy, for I am holy. It's always there. It's like this message, guys. I got this two years ago, almost two years ago. A year ago. Just now coming to fruition. For me, house cleaning, guys. What do you do when you go to spring clean? Man, my wife is really good at that when she does it. And she's a very clean and thorough person, anyhow. But when she gets on that mission to clean, man, you cannot sit down. She's going to work you. This is not about works, but, it, it, man, it gets done. And it gets done right and well and efficient. And, man, you know, what seemed like might have took days is a couple few hours and we're done. And it looks good. And I enjoy it. Our house is always pretty clean. My wife's a very clean person anyhow, but you know, we get a little cluttered though. That's, you know, my office is really bad, but um, she lets me get away with it. She just kind of like shakes her head. So I get a free pass on that one, but the um, rest of the house, no. But I'm always picking up after myself. I try to be, you know, thorough too, but God wants to clean our house, guys purge us and the only way you can purge us is if we're praying and seeking him that's why i've been putting out that imperativeness about the 5 a.m prayer come see me at prayer come pray with me at five in the morning i've been getting up at three now honestly but five three five whatever early in the morning why because Not up looking at Facebook. I'm not out checking my messages. I'm not out doing YouTube. Well, I am sometimes, but I first pray about it. Lord, what do you want me to do? Sometimes I get a cup of coffee, usually, generally, but I don't even try to eat or do anything. I'm, I ask him, what do you want me to do first, Lord? Pray, read my Bible, it's got scriptures. What's the order? Sometimes it changes, but I always bring it to them in prayer, and that's what I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you the direction that we gotta go. We've missed the date, too. That's gonna be one of my next messages. It's not January 6th, it's January 8th. 
and put that out on my next message, and I'll tell you why. Some other scriptures that the Lord gave me. Kind of correlates to this one. Read Revelations 1, 8, all the way down. But we've missed God. He wants to talk with us in the cool of the day, but he can't because of the pollution that's in our mind. This coronavirus mess. The election infection. We've got to get rid of the infection first, guys. I'm going to end with this because I'm going to put out several messages. I can say this with authority. Yes, the disease is very real, guys. But the motive behind it and what they're doing with it is sin. It's been weaponized just to get usher in the mark of the beast, honestly. Guys, look how easy and peasy it just flowed in. The pollution. Everywhere you go, masks mandated. You know, you go to a store, it's like a big sign in front of it. Wear a mask. I mean, I don't and won't. 99% of the time, unless the corona police are yelling at me about it. And then sometimes I have to decide, do I even want to shop there at that store? I mean, I go shopping all the time. I just keep it in my pocket and I just walk in. Big sign in front of the store. You know what it reminds me of? During the World War II and the Germans and the people sent them to death camps and they have a big sign, Octoon, pay attention, listen. That's what the enemy's doing, guys, polluting our mind. God wants to fill it. The only way he's going to fill it is if we empty it and we just, that's why that 5 a.m. prayer is so important because there's no distractions. Even the start of the day, many of y'all are so busy on your jobs. Well, you know, God pulled a lot of that back too. Why? Because he wants to walk with us in the cool of the day, guys. He wants us back. I'm going to st stay on this theme, the hospital, okay, and the disease, okay? I can say this with authority, okay? Some of my messages kind of step on a few toes. I'm not trying to be that abrasive kind of preacher, but they do. I just have to be about my father's business, and I can't change that and won't change it. I, You know, I pray about a lot of this stuff. Sometimes it's years in the making, honestly. Sometimes a day, I mean, I don't just try really hard not to just spit stuff out. Well, the devil stepped in my toe in a roundabout way. But I was in three emergency rooms over two weeks in the hospital. I'm diabetic and I got in a big infection underneath my toe. I didn't see it because it was underneath the backside of my toe. And it, my, down, my foot was hurting for about two weeks. And, but... It didn't look bad or anything, but then all of a sudden it just blew up like a red chili hot pepper, like bad. Swelled up. Man, it was nasty looking. Seemed seemingly overnight. Well, it was the day before Thanksgiving. My wife's like, you need to go to the hospital. We need to go. You call 911 and you just need to come on. It's Thanksgiving. I'm not going to ruin everybody's Thanksgiving. God's going to take care of this. Got to the hospital. Put me in the emergency room. Took me, admitted me right away. First one we didn't go to because my wife looked at the reviews, it was horrible. So we found a different one that she thought we liked. Got there and they put me in and all they did was, you know, started antibiotics and put a big sign on, on my chart and everything and on the door, you know, don't, can't eat after midnight because of the procedure. I'm like, what procedure? And well, they kind of handed around it. Well, what they wanted to do was start amputating. I'm like, man, my, but if you saw my leg, it was red all the way from my hip down. I'd be up on down, like, ugly, nasty. And I told my wife, I said, I'll be fine as long as the doctor doesn't come in with the bolt cutters and a chainsaw and a hacksaw. And he did the next day. The guy that was going to do it, well, it was the weekend. Because I didn't go until Friday, so this was Saturday. He was off. It was a holiday weekend, too, and... You know, this this doctor, and some of them were okay, but this doctor came in and he didn't even have his scrubs on or anything. He looked like he just came from a sports bar. And he was just like, now it's my day off and do they do an x-ray, blah, blah, blah. He was in there a minute. 
talking about cutting my whole toe off my foot probably and just who knows what I'd have woke up from the surgery and they'd have cut my leg off from the neck on down you know if I'd have even survived honestly like no I prayed about it the night before the doctor came in Lord was pretty adamant he said get rid of the infection first and I stuck to that and they were mad and I stayed in there a week and they were mad and then I got out against medical advice and they were really mad. They didn't even, weren't even give me a walker guys to get out to the door, to the car. We had to raise ruckus to get that. I was like, man, guys, they did a lot of good stuff, but they did a lot of stuff that just was like, man, Very traumatic, guys, to get to the, I wanted to go see my specialist, my podiatrist. He said the same thing, man. You better get to the emergency room and blah, blah, blah. And I did. I had to have an operation. They had to stop the infection. But the infection, I mean, I was on, I, I was on anywhere from two to eight bottles of antibiotics a day. Or whatever, big bags. Sometimes two at a time. I bet they put 60 to 80 IVs in me. I'm not making that up. But by the time I got to the second hospital and they did a couple more days of, of the antibiotics, and the doctor was awesome, they cut about this much of my toe off. And that was it. And the last thing he did was, and he was very thorough and talked to us for about 10, 15 minutes. Everything was great and awesome. For as far as being in the hospital, it was great and awesome. But being there, no. But as far as everything they did, yes. But the last thing he did was he cut a little bit of the bone off that was still attached to my leg. And the long story, they did a week-long biopsy. I mean, I got a lot of messages out of it, but this was one. The infection doctor came in and said that we're doing a biopsy and it took a week and they finally got the results back. But he said, he said, you know, he said, because the infection was in my bone. He said, but, you know, he said, one of the tests they did at the first hospital was a sonogram to check my blood flow. Great blood flow. He said that was great news because it said it didn't matter how strong the medicine was, if it wasn't getting to the bone, because the bone the bone will die if it doesn't get the blood. Well, guess what, guys? The body's kind of been dry bones. We've been dead, dead meat. Because we haven't been connected to the to the blood. Through the blood of the lamb. We say we are. Man, I'm telling you, it's time to clean house. This one's free. Why, when you go to most churches, do they have a stage? Three or four steps up. Why do you need a stage? Why do you have to have a big stage? And I, I saved a million people. I raised, I raised the dead. I did all this. Man, you're not impressing God. Sorry. He wants us to be about our father's business. You know, people might not even see it. It doesn't matter, guys. What matters is, you know, what are we doing for him? We've been polluted. The stage, you know, it's some dude on a, on a guitar, the whole service, and now, oh, it's a prayer set or whatever, a prayer meeting or whatever. Man, it's a dude on a guitar. Or, or, you know, it's like a rock band kind of. I mean, we've been sensationalized. It's polluted. The church is polluted. The government's polluted. The world's polluted. Diluted. we got to get rid of the infection first, guys. And the infection is sin. He wants to... Judgment starts at the house. Our house. Mine. Yours. Come on, guys. Let's get real here. Like I said, this is going to be a real raw message. It has nothing to do with the election, the election infection, whatever. Of course we've been lied to. Of course there's plenty of fraud or whatever, you know? Pick one. But it was for a reason. The reason was the evilness, the, the sin, the ushering in of the one world government, the mark of the beast. It's just not time yet, guys. The harvest. I'm going to end with this. Some of the things the Lord's had me do, but I'm not going to go into all the details yet. It's just not time. But he said, gather all you can to give all you can. So I've been doing that for about a year now. 
Then he said recently in the last couple of weeks, he said, gather all you can to give all you can to gather all you can. And I got the first part, you know, gather. I've been doing that. I've been giving a lot. Time, money, things. To help the poor and the needy. All over the place, guys. From the men, from people in front of 7-Eleven to some different ministries. So I got that. I was gathering and I was giving. Almost as fast as I could. And I thought I was, you know, doing the right thing. And I was. But the last part, can give all you can, gather all you can to give all you can to gather all you can. I'm like, I prayed about that. About a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I got my answer. The answer was, it's harvest time, guys. Give all you can, and gather all you can, to give all you can, to gather all you can. The gathering all you can is where he wants us to gather the bride together, the body of Christ. But he can't do it when our house is polluted and diluted and we're so filled with lies. Some of them we even believe from the enemy. Walk around, it's like number and dumber everywhere you go, everybody's got a mask on. I'm not saying that you should get sick and that you shouldn't be, you know, cautious and all that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying the disease isn't real. Like I said, I spent all that time in the hospital. It was packed. But there's a lot of diseases, guys. There's a lot, I and mean, we all die. I'm not mocking, making fun of that. I'm not saying it's not serious. For one thing, it was man-made, anyhow, weaponized. Man, it's going to take God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost's word to stop this, not some governmental bailout. I'm going to end with this, guys, okay? Woke up. This is just another part of the deception. Woke up. 1200 bucks was in my bank account. I added to my bank account, like, you know, from the Treasury Department. You should be like, everybody should be like, yay, man, that's free money. No, it's not. Man, I felt, I felt, I felt dirty and violated, guys, like a cheap hooker. Sorry. It's polluted, diluted, misused. It was money we didn't have for one. It just added to the debt deficit. Why the sudden urgency to do it? It's like they want to buy votes or whatever, buy the cheap lies, buy the, the trash, cover it up. It is house cleaning time. And it's going to start in your house. My house. Me. We're the house, guys. That, I'm going to end with that. One day I was at a church and they were big and trying to get even bigger. And that was all about big, 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 getting another building. Blah, 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 da, da, da. Seemed like that was the whole theme. Okay. But I wasn't buying it. And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, why do you want a bigger house? A house that man built. When I've already got one. I've already built a house. That was us fitly framed together. From the beginning of time, guys. That's why abortion is so detrimental to this country. Because it is taking a life that God created. To cover up a sin, a sin of fornication, and just disposable, you don't like it, it's a clump and a lump, and call whatever you want. I'm telling you, it's house cleaning time, guys. And we've missed the date. We, we're so hell-bent, hell I'm sorry, we're so bent on the 6th, the 6th, everything's going to change. Man, we put all of our faith in the government. Isaiah 9, I think it's 9, 6. I've got that message out, but the government rests upon his shoulders. He can be called wonderful, true counselor, king of kings. Trump isn't, Biden isn't, Congress isn't, Jesus is king. Our government isn't. Yes, we want righteous people and authority, and we need to pray that in. Right now, it's tons of unrighteousness and evil intent in people's hearts. So, love you guys. Clean up your act. And it's not a work thing. It's so that we can be holy, 
so that God can talk to us in the cool of the day so we're not tra full of trash. Love you guys. Um, talk to you soon.